So here we have uh, Numa Perrier. Yes, just like the water. Do you want to wear these? You can wear those. You want to wear those? Yeah, I'll wear, I'll wear them. Yeah, I want you to wear them. Because you know why? Because I just, this is the intention of this type of stuff. Okay. Yeah. We're all cool people. Oh, all right. Sure. So cool. Are we? <laughs> Super cool. Yeah, but you know, I guess we're artists, you know, we kind of reflect some sort of aspects. Some aspects of us. Anyway, I'm mumbling and mumbling. That would be cut out. Okay. Um, oh, okay. I think you should leave it in. I should? Yeah. Okay. All right. I will. I think. Hey, Numa. What's up? How are you today? <laughs> so, tell us something about your... No, well, tell us about who... Tell us about who you are. What do you do at this point in your life? I create many things, art, films, other kinds of art. So you said you said children? Yeah, well, I mean, a child. child but, yeah. yeah well. well, that's <laughs> art by itself. Just the whole idea of it's the, the ultimate art, right? Yep. Just the whole idea of the creator kind of like just came up with this design and be like, all right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you really see how you exactly you fit into that architecture, intelligent design. Yes. You believe in it that way. So, I asked you the question of what you know, who you are, and what do you do. But who are you, really? I am a being in a body. But if you were to contextualize Numa Perrier, Perrier, what are the multitude of things that you are? Because as far as I see from your personality, your character, what you stand for, what you put out, there are a lot of things that just are made up in you. Mm -hmm. Yes, it's like that one of my favorite quotes is the Walt Whitman. Quote, he says, I am large, I contain multitudes. You contain multitudes. So, yeah. Okay. What inspires your art? Or where are you seeking to go in your art? More and more personal. I think that's the place where I'm most personal. It's in my art. The way I look at life, what my life has been, the parts of that I want to share with people. That's, I just seek to become more... Personally. For me, like when I look at your work, it looks like you're sort of uh, excavating or digging up your identity and reconciling with even the past. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think the past that relates to yourself. Mm -hmm. um, why do you go through that process? Why do you feel obligated to go through that process? It's my experience has led me there. I mean, that's the best way I can put it. I think that yeah, all the experiences I've had since I was a child led me to be highly imaginative, led me to endure highly uncomfortable situations that I then am still seeking to express because I felt isolated outside of that expression. Okay. Why did you feel isolated? I guess to get a little more, to dig a little deeper into what your expression is. Mm -hmm. I feel isolated because I don't often run across people that have traveled the kind of life that I've traveled. Okay. And on occasion when I do, it's almost shocking. So even then it's hard to really talk about it, but putting it in my art, helps me to talk about it, it helps me to at least share that feeling that I have with other people. And then so they're being hit with it too, and then it just keeps going from there. Okay. <laughs> what do you imagine, actually do you ever think about that you would like to leave a legacy? Or do you just go ahead and you just do your work and just... No, I mean I think about that in terms of having, you know, a retrospective in the future. You know, I think about it, but I don't, it's not something I dwell on. 
you know, I, I think about it because I'm advancing and I'm doing more work and I'm, e I'm able to look at the work that I've created and, and know how far I've come and, you know, so you think about it, but I, it's not, I don't dwell on it, no. Okay. I consider you a brave person. Thank you. You've you seem to trailblaze your own path with sort of a unabashed, like unapologetic manner. Mm -hmm. um, where does that come from? Uh, I think that came from me feeling like I had really very little control over my life as a child and really being in a very desperate situation, I felt, um, enduring abuses, enduring, just enduring heartache, you know, and then feeling like when I'm an adult, I'm going to do exactly what I want to do, how I want to do it. You know, I was always looking forward to that day when I turned 18 and I wouldn't have to be under the household anymore, under my parents anymore. And pretty much from that point, actually before I even turned 18, I left my home. I was living on my own in my senior year of high school. I moved in to a friend's house and was paying $80 a month for a room. My friend's mom was actually charging me rent, but I was paying $80 a month for a room, and I, I left my household. Did you so have to buy I groceries? I that. Uh, I fed myself. Oh, okay. I fed myself. I mean, if her mom made food, I, I would sometimes eat, but I, I fed myself. I paid my own pager, you know. Yeah, pager, uh, wow. I, I paid my, yeah, I had a pager. Um, I paid for that. I paid my $80 a month, and I went to school. I was a student in high school. Okay. So, how does it feel to be a creative, a creator, an artist? It's a great feeling. I mean, we we're, were born to create. I was created to create. So it, it feels whole. It feels, it feels like that's who I am. And have you ever had a moment where you felt like you didn't want to create anymore? No. No, I've never had that feeling. I've not wanted to create certain things. Maybe I got, you know, tired of photography for a while aside making a film for a while and turn to writing but I, I always want to create something. Okay. What do you like about yourself? <laughs> uh, I don't I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> uh, I mean I I like my talent. I like my intelligence. I like my thirst for knowledge, I like my creativity. Do you accept your power? Sometimes. More and more, yeah. Oh. More and more. Because I think that's what that's where like the key is. When you start accepting your power. Mm -hmm. But I mean it's been a new disc it's been a new discovery for me also, mm -hmm. so but it's this whole idea I of... That. I think I can see that shift in you, actually. Oh, you, you can? Yeah. Oh, well, trying to breathe a little better. Mm-hmm. Are you doing but, No, <laughs> just meditation. I meditate. I meditate almost daily. I do mini meditations. Mini meditations, yeah. like five minutes, ten minutes? Yeah, no more, than, no more than ten minutes. Usually it happens in the shower or first thing when I wake up or sometime in the middle of the day. You know, I don't have a set time, but I... I think you should try a little longer. No, I don't think you need to meditate longer. There's a reason why I should try a little longer. You'll okay. find out when I'll you try. try. I'll try. Just it. try like a 30 minutes, you know, mm -hmm. just go on YouTube, find, find like a 30 minute session with the music, because mm -hmm. I find like the music does help, actually. Mm -hmm. And try it out. Because you might like you do, might go I in. I feel like I do a longer meditation when I go running or something Okay, that's, like that, well, you know? yeah, that's, okay, or you have a fair I, argument. Or when I'm in a certain zone, but when I'm actually focusing on creating something metaphysically, mm -hmm. um, 
it's a process that I often do in the shower. There's something about water being a conductor and the water pouring down on me that I just invoke a lot of light and... Okay. So, I find that yeah. taking a shower also washes off a lot of anxious or energy that's just clinging to yeah, you. Yeah, I love, my shower time is definitely my, <laughs> my time where I connect to my power. So that's more than and 10 minutes. And my shower, you know, no, I take quick showers. <laughs> Okay. Oh, it's 10 to 15 minutes. You know? Oh, that's a good lengthy yeah. time to get into, I you get know, the moment. Yeah. The that's my me time. That's your me time. <laughs> How does it feel now that you're a mom? In what way? Uh, to be frank, as an artist, yeah, balancing that act. It didn't take me too long to balance it because I was doing a lot, uh, I was creating a lot while I was pregnant and I saw my pregnancy as a very opportune time to create. Um, partly because I wasn't distracted by certain things. It was almost a more focused time in my life where, yeah, I wasn't, I let a lot of other things go. You know, even just simple things like thinking about my body you know, and, and being really distracted by that was not so present when I was pregnant. I'm like, okay. well, I'm pregnant, and here it is. I mean, I was definitely aware of <laughs> the ever-changing uh, volume guess it's, of my body, but I wasn't... It's the notion It was just, a, there was a freedom in the pregnancy, and there was a definitely a period of time and a real time for me to connect to what was created and growing inside of me okay. so it was really so in it a wasn't way you're too hard to balance because I, I was already coming from this point of I feel you feel all right like the ultimate artist right exactly. now I got this child and and then after you know she was born after my daughter was born uh, there was more balancing that had to happen as far as actually taking care of the child and yes. examining who I was now and should I still behave the same way that I used to behave? Can I still do the same things I used to do? I definitely went through a lot of that. Okay. Trying to figure out who I was now as a mother and did I need to change? Was I changing? Was I okay with either way? You know, I, went, I definitely went through that period. Sometimes I ask this question to other people. Um, do you consider, how do you feel about the phrase black artist? Not to get into the politics of black and white. I love this question because every time it's asked of me, I feel like I feel differently about it every time. Sometimes when I'm asked that question, I, I feel like, well, I'm, I'm, I am black and I am an artist, so I'm a black artist, sure. And other times I feel like, well, I'm a mother and I'm black, but I don't call myself a black mother. You know, my, my parenting and my love for my daughter and me being a mom to her, I don't feel that that's so informed by me, by me being black. Okay. You know, and I think, when I think about it in those terms, I feel like, well, I'm an artist and I'm not a black artist, yeah. you know. You, <laughs> you know, you shouldn't so be. It's I, sort I, of a. Does it feel like you, it's sort of a maligning of, or sort of well, reducing? My, reducing? But my work, no, I don't think. Say? I think sometimes the label is used, you know, in a reductive way. Mm -hmm. So I think that that is the resistance that many artists have towards it, and it's it's seen as well. You're put into a subcategory now, and now we're going to view your work in this lens and other cultures and then in the black culture now you have to deal with that lens and it's a moral lens and it's an aesthetic lens and I don't I don't care for other people's lenses on my work. Okay. So that's the part that I have a resistance to. But my work is very you know, racially it's it can be racially political. It's definitely I'm dealing with wimp with issues pertaining to myself as a woman, as a black woman, as a Haitian woman. So I definitely deal with those things. That's why I always feel different every time someone asks me that question. You know? So now relating to, um, you just mentioned that you're Haitian. Mm -hmm. I always find to me the Haitian artists or art, artists of Haitian descent 
They seem to be inhabited by some sort of spirited nature. And it comes out in their work. <laughs> oh yeah, it definitely does. And it definitely comes out in my work in, in ways that I don't even realize sometimes. I realize later after I've created something that, oh, uh, this was infused with, you know, um, this spirit or this tradition that I didn't even know of that well, but it's somehow in me, it somehow comes out. You know, my mother will tell me sometimes or ask me about that. What do you think of, well, this is not the last question, but what do you think of, do you think there's enough um, encouragement and teaching and showing and, and, and just overall just large support body among black artists? Encouragement what, from, from where? Well, I'm just thinking like in, in terms, sometimes I look at the, what I, the folks I consider the elders, mm -hmm. and I feel Who like there's people? a missing gap in Who terms. Who are these people? Who are these people? I would assume. Who are these people? Ah. I feel encouraged. Okay. Uh, I mean, among your peers, you are encouraged. I feel encouraged by other artists who I feel are, you know, high stature artists yes. who are not, I wouldn't consider elders, but they're older than yeah, I am. Yeah, that's what I mean. Like, and they've been, they've been creating for a long time. Uh, I, I feel very encouraged by them. They're, they're, I mean, they're verbally, you know, encouraging, and um, one has kind of, I don't want to say taken me under his wing, but he's, you know, I'll hear from other artists that that particular artist is talking about me and my work and mm -hmm. encourage, encouraging me through others that he knows will come back and tell me, you know, so... But I guess I'm, I'm trying to ask in the context of when it comes to younger artists that are coming up now because I find that I see good work and a lot mm -hmm. of great work out there, but it's not being noticed, it's not being mm -hmm. paid attention to, it's mm -hmm. not... So, and there are, you know, again, a lot of young artists that are with great work, and I just wish they could be but like. Who's not paying attention? Do you feel? I don't know. I think the the the, the makers and the shakers, mm -hmm. um, the museums. Uh, I feel yeah, like no, there's this we're aspect of. Still pushing against that. Uh, again, it's not something that I try. I try to dwell, dwell on. That's what I try to dwell on because. It will interrupt my process if I start doing that. And I see a True. lot of artists that I feel are interrupted by that, uh, by focusing on that. And it's a real thing to focus on, so there's no denying that, but you still have to choose where you put your thoughts, you know? So um, it's very real, and there are organizations around this, and I'm part of some of those organizations in Los Angeles as one. Black artists in LA, Byla and uh, Lily Bernard, an artist in LA, is she's creating, or she organizes meetings with the Black artists in LA and the heads of the various museums. So okay. There's one with the Getty coming up in August. There's been one at the MoMA. There's been one at the Hammer Museum. All the major museums, and you go there, and it's 80 percent you know, a bitter bitching session, and then if the other percentage actual actual change is being implemented, at okay. least studio visits are at least happening with these artists now, so I, I try to just stay in the lane of changing that, changing, you know, okay. then and talking focused. about how far we have, I can't look up that mountain, it's too high, it's too steep, it's bloody, you know, there's it's dangerous, there's rocks, you know. I, I have to just focus. Keep one foot in front of the other and just and do my work. Okay. Um what's your philosophy in life? Philosophy in life. Um, li li live well. <laughs> live well, enjoy, be happy, um, have sex. <laughs> Just, you know, just enjoy your life. Enjoy enjoy your body while you have one. Like, get good use out of it. 
That's how I feel. Enjoy, you know, what, the things that you can touch and feel. And, hey. You know. Yeah, I always believe things need to be tangible. Mm -hmm. So. I am. That's something I'm really trying to create in my work. Art. Tangibility. That's tangibility. You know, uh, having further dimensions. That's why I get so frustrated by painting or even photography. I get frustrated, not frustrated, but I'm always. That's why I work in mixed media because I'm trying to make it reach A everywhere more. that it can reach and be as, as tangible as possible. And I guess to be active also, mm -hmm. so it makes yeah. it more active. Mm -hmm. and, and to endure. I mean, the more. The more places you can, or the more, I don't know, just the more avenues that you can explore, the more the more you have a chance of what you're expressing will reach someone. Because not everyone's moved by photography. People don't get installation work, or they don't want to watch your video art, you know, but <laughs> there'll be something, something that in there. them, you know, okay. so. Well, thanks for joining me and giving me your time. To have You're this welcome. little ch chat. <laughs> <laughs> My pleasure. And we're about to be peace out. Hey, there we go. <laughs>